Hey, what's up guys? So creatine is essentially one of the most popular supplements in the entire world, specifically within the context of the uh, bodybuilding community. And it's really prized for its ability to increase strength and muscle mass, which I just made a video on. However, uh, a lot of folks don't know that there are other health benefits that are associated with taking creatine. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about those uh, specific health benefits. So let's dive right in. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Zach and welcome to Nutrition Library where we take an evidence-based approach to supplementation and nutrition. If you are new to the channel, do me a huge favor and hit the red subscribe button that's below this video so you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. So as I mentioned in my previous video, I've been taking creatine for over 13 years now. And aside from its ability to increase strength and increase muscle mass and increase athletic performance, there are a handful of other health benefits that are associated with taking creatine. And so again, those lesser known benefits are what we're gonna be covering in this video. Now, the first lesser known benefit that I wanna talk about in this video is uh, creatine's ability to improve cognition. Now, the caveat here is that uh, there are really only two populations that seem to um, benefit, cognitively speaking, from consuming uh, and supplementing with creatine. And that is one, those that are vegetarian or vegan, and that's because creatine is primarily found in meat products. And so if you're not consuming meat products, you're um, likely um, insufficient or deficient in creatine. Um, and so by supplementing and kind of reintroducing it back into the diet, um, there is is a notable increase in cognition in that specific population. However, according to this study, there also seems to be a cognitive um, improvement in individuals that are also fatigued. Now, that study in particular did look at individuals that were taking essentially like a math test, um, and it did show that those that were fatigued performed notably better um, on that mathematical test. Now, I don't think that the mechanisms here are fully understood yet. How However, I do think there are a handful of things uh, that are going on here that I do want to cover in this video. And the first one um, is that according to this study, it appears that creatine uh, may improve cognition by increasing cerebral oxygen uh, utilization. Now, just like the rest of your body, your brain does utilize oxygen in order to properly um, produce energy. However, unlike the rest of your body, your brain almost exclusively utilizes glucose as an energy substance substrate. Um, and the thing about glucose um, as an energy substrate is that it requires oxygen in order to be utilized. And without enough oxygen, it does significantly slow down the energy utilization process. And so by increasing uh, your brain's ability to uh, utilize oxygen, it also increases your brain's ability to kind of produce energy. Now, again, the exact mechanism by which creatine is able to do this, I don't think is yet fully understood how However, this is a fairly interesting um, topic that I am super interested to see future research on. Now, the second way that creatine is able to uh, improve cognition is by um, improving what I described in my previous video as the phosphagen system, the phosphagen energy system specifically. Now, the phosphagen energy pathway utilizes creatine as an energy substrate in order to produce ATP at a um, extremely high rate. And so when you have stores of creatine, not just in muscle tissue, uh, but also in nerve cells and in brain cells. Um, creatine is not only stored in the muscles, but it's also stored in the brain as well. And so uh, when you have these increased stores of creatine, it theoretically um, and practically uh, speaking is able to increase the level of ATP that is created at an extremely high rate that therefore increases cognitive output, especially um, when there is a high demand on energy. Now, the third way that creatine Creatine improves cognition is by improving glutamate signaling within the brain and the central nervous system. Now, glutamate signals primarily through the NMDA receptor within the context of the central nervous system and is one of your primary kind of stimulatory uh, neurotransmitter receptors and is stimulated by glutamate. And so by creatine being able to improve the signaling of this pathway, it also improves uh, just overall stimulation and kind of increases the brain's capacity 
capacity to process information. Now, creatine may not classically be considered a nootropic. However, um, with the research that is currently coming out, I am fairly hopeful that it will be established as a fairly potent nootropic um, here in the future. Now, the second lesser known benefit that I want to talk about today is creatine's ability to improve hormone status. Now, specifically, creatine appears to be able to increase testosterone levels in men by up to 15%, um, as well as increase DHT by up to 56%. Now, one of the important things to note here is that the research on the association between creatine and testosterone is fairly mixed. However, with all things considered, um, it, it does point in the direction that there is some type of increase in improvement in androgen status in men specifically. And the mechanism isn't quite understood yet. However, if I had to speculate, it probably has something to do with creatine's ability to reduce fatigue. Now, as I talked about in my previous video on creatine, uh, creatine does seem fairly reliable at decreasing specifically muscular fatigue, but also appears to decrease um, mental fatigue as well. And um, it's fairly established that fatigue has a negative correlation with testosterone. And so when you increase fatigue, uh, you're going to decrease testosterone. And so when you decrease fatigue, um, specifically with creatine supplementation, there does appear to be an increase in testosterone and DHT. Now, when it comes to DHT specifically, um, I am kind of holding out to kind of make a definitive statement about its effects on DHT simply because the study that we do have at hand on its effects on DHT are fairly pronounced, meaning that there was a massive impact on DHT levels. And so I'm curious to see whether or not this was just a kind of like a, a statistical anomaly or if there really is a, um, a reliable effect on increasing DHT to this level. However, DHT is typically created within the body um, by converting testosterone into DHT by an enzyme known as 5-alpha reductase. So the important thing to note here is that when you increase testosterone in the body to a fairly significant degree, your body typically recognizes that and does not want that to happen. And so what it typically does is either converts that testosterone um, one into estrogen by utilizing the aromatase enzyme um, or two by converting that testosterone into DHT by the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. And so what does appear is going on here to some degree, and again, it's not super clear, but to some degree, creatine is increasing testosterone to a fair enough level that the body is recognizing that testosterone is increased above normal levels and is then uh, converting that testosterone into DHT via the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. Now, the third lesser known health benefit of taking creatine um, that I want to talk about in this video is its effects on mood. Now, creatine specifically has been shown to um, be effective at reducing symptoms of depression in depressed individuals, as well as improve mood in mentally fatigued individuals. Now, creatine hasn't been super studied in this regard. However, it does appear that there is some correlation and association between uh, creatine supplementation and improvements in mood. Now, again, the mechanisms here aren't fully established. However, there are probably a handful of things that are going on here that I want to talk about. And one is possible improvements in methylation status. Now, this is fairly technical and probably beyond the scope of this video. However, in general, when you increase methylation in individuals that are under methylated and are not methylating properly within the body, um, there is typically an improvement in mood. And um, it does appear that creatine has the ability to improve methylation status, which thereby also uh, may improve mood. And this is specifically relevant for uh, certain individuals that are positive for um, some specific uh, MTHFR uh, mutations that affect folate metabolism. And so again, by creatine being able to improve methylation in these specific individuals, there's probably going to be an improvement in mood that's also associated with that supplementation. Now, the second way that creatine may improve mood is by preserving and increasing levels of the neurotransmitters serotonin and dopamine. Now, serotonin and dopamine are two of the neurotransmitters that are typically associated with improvements and mood. And when they are increased, increased feelings of satisfaction and safety and motivation and pleasure. And so when you increase uh, these neurotransmitters, there's obviously going to be an improvement in mood as well. Um, and so by creatine being able to one, improve methylation status, but two, also increase levels of these key uh, neurotransmitters, it 
appears um, as though there is a fairly reliable improvement in mood in specific populations. And all in all, I do think creatine is one of the more um, effective supplements that is in existence, period, not just for improving muscle mass and increasing um, athletic performance, but also to just generally speaking, improve well-being. And because of this, it's um, a supplement that I typically recommend uh, pretty much everyone at least try out. One, because of its effectiveness. Two, because of how much research it has behind it. And three, because of just how cheap it is to consume. Now, before I let you guys go, I do want to give another huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of available online classes on anything from entrepreneurship to graphic design to even classes on how to start and grow a YouTube channel, which is actually um, a class that I'm currently taking by Marquis Brownlee. Now, the cool thing here is that it's only $10 per month um, and there are absolutely zero ads. And the really cool thing is that the first 1,000 subscribers of mine to click the link in the description will actually get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. Now, in case you haven't noticed, um, online education is literally the wave of the future. And so you don't have to be a um, professional content creator in order to utilize and enjoy Skillshare's platform. And so if you are interested in this, make sure to check out the link that's in the description.